Hello everyone! The other day, someone on the stream asked me if Warcraft still has enough stories to tell to fill future expansions. I speculated a little bit during the stream from the top of my head, but later I figured that it might be fun to actually dedicate a video to it, and this is that video. Keep in mind that there are countless stories that they could invent in the future, and this is just me speculating a little bit about stories that they might use, about features that might be introduced, so this is just me speculating for a little bit of fun. Hope you'll enjoy. Let's begin, shall we? Starting off with the story that I find most likely to happen next, it's the expansion named Eye of Azshara. This story takes place after we come back from Draenor and we find out that the world of Azeroth has been taken over by Azshara, by the Naga and Nazoth. Queen Azshara, she used to be the queen of the Night Elves, until her plans of summoning Sargeras and the Legion failed. As the waters surrounded her palace, whispers of the old gods offered her a deal. There is a way. You will become more than you ever were. We can help. You will be more than you've ever been, and when the time comes for what we grant you, you will serve us well. Azhar and the Highborn that were with her, they were transformed to the Naga, and they took up residence beneath the waves as the Sundering took place and transformed the world of Kalimdor. Azhara wasn't a queen just for her looks, even though she was beautiful to behold. She used her magic to enchant those around her, and the pit lord Manorov, he recognized that she was a force against which only his lord Sargeras and Archimond would prove superior. That means that she was more powerful than Manorov even as a night elf, and now she's teamed up with the old gods, so who knows what kind of power she has. So Azshara would be the main character in this storyline, but similar to the Cataclysm, where Deathwing was the main guy but there was a guy behind the guy, so too does Azshara follow orders and behind her are the old gods, specifically the old god Nazoth. We've seen his influence before during the Cataclysm, as he was said to be the one signing Deathwing's paychecks, and those that questioned him Vajir, you've also seen a few of his minions. The novel Stormrage had the Emerald Dream turn into the Emerald Nightmare, and the old god Nazoth was also behind this, and at the end of the book, Malfurion could sense that the evil behind it all was still in the ocean, but they would deal with it at another day. All these hints at Nazoth being near the ocean, being beneath the waves of Azeroth, it has me believe that he's the one working close together with Azora and the Naga. This story it would be a great opening to introduce the other half of Azeroth, which we've never seen before, and we know that this is a possibility thanks to Red Shirt Guy at BlizzCon 2013. The southernmost points of the Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor and Pandaria, are all either jungle or desert, which almost suggests we're at the equator. So does that mean there's a whole southern hemisphere of Azeroth left to explore in the future? Yes. Uh, yes. One, one day, no. let's just say, what did you say? Yes? Ocean and no. Currents? <laughs> we could say yes and no at the same time. No, it's a very, it's a very astute observation. It's crazy. Actually, we, we actually have argued about this in the studio. And it's, uh, boy, we went back and forth. Because it does look like it's all temperate, you know, kind of down there. Um, so I think it's totally possible that there's more stuff down there. An unknown area of Azeroth, there's such potential to be placed there, so many secrets still hidden on Azeroth. On top of that, we also have a bunch of islands that we already know about. We got Kaltaras, which is uh, Jaina's homeland, we got Tel Abim, the magical banana island, we got Kazan, the home island of the goblins, that still has parts to play, and of course, we can't forget about the trolls. During Mr. Pandaria, we found out that the cataclysm also hit Zandalar, and it's now slowly sinking into the sea. King Rastakan, a ruler of the Zandalari, he gave some ships to the prophet Zul to shut him up about his catastrophic prophecies, and these prophecies actually turn out to be true. Zul offered his people a way to escape, they decided to follow the prophets, and this leaves the fate of Rastakan unknown. I think Rastakan could be a great way to get us more familiar with ancient troll lore, perhaps with a little bit of titan lore or origin of Azeroth lore, and it also opens up the door to Vol'jin to make new allegiances and step forward in his new role as warchief. The first non-Orcish war chief in history deserves his time in the spotlight. And what better way to do it than to combine it with some good old-fashioned troll stories? I think that could be awesome. Now for the Alliance side, I would say that this is a good time to bring back Magni Bronzebeard and create some drama within the unified faction that it currently is. Just before the Cataclysm, Magni Bronzebeard tried to use an ancient Titan ritual to communicate with the land, figure out what was going on and what was happening with the Cataclysm. This ritual backfired and instead of communicating with the land, he was turned into a crystal, he became one with the land, but his spirit is still very much alive. He was mentioned in Thrall's short story, so he could still come back one day and he could guide us in this new unexplored territory of Azeroth. 
Just imagine the former king waking up to find not only his daughter is now in the Council of Three Hammers, but also his grandson, the half Bronzebeard, half Dark Iron. The world as he knew it has completely changed. Will he be able to deal with that? Or will he try to reclaim his former seat of power? And will there be some little bit of drama? I would love to see that, to be honest. Right now, the Alliance is such a unified force. They are so very boring right now. I would love to see some more drama. So those are the major characters for that expansion. So in short, we come back, the Naga have taken over the world, and we have to stop Azara, Nazov, uh, they even have Neptalon under their control, whatever else they have in their arsenal. We need to take care of that, and we need to save the world. To aid us, we get the party with King Rastakan, we get to build our own shipyard with sea battles, we get Magni Bronzebeard back, we get different islands, a whole new area of Azeroth to explore. I think there's a lot of potential for this storyline, and a great addition to this would be a neutral faction of pirates, perhaps, that could choose to work for either side, or perhaps this is the moment for the Murlocs to shine. Part of the expansion would have to take place within the water, of course, but you don't just get a seahorse like they did with Vashir, you also get submarines, while above the waves you get to sit sail on your boat, you get to fight with each other, you get the quest on land, it's gonna be great. Now the second story that they can go with is a one that I like to call the Great Dark Beyond, but keep in mind these are just names that I give it. The Great Dark Beyond is a term used for the unexplored space or galaxy or universe or whatever you want to call it, pretty much anything unexplored in the Warcraft universe, that is called the Great Dark Beyond. This story begins similar to the previous one, as in we've cleaned up the storyline of Draenor, we go home and instead of finding the Naga partying on the planets, this time it's the Legion. Great Crane. You have not seen what I have seen. You underestimate me. The fires that once burned the sky will return. It is inevitable. The Burning Legion will find Azeroth. Seas of blood. Cities in ruin. Who are we? One divided world to stand against a legion. Raphion's warnings during Mr. Pandaria of the world not ready yet, they've come true, and the Legion has dominated our remaining forces. Many of our heroes have been taken prisoner, taken to the home base in Argus, and we need to take care of this threat once and for all. The Legion has pushed us too far, and now that we know how to kill them for good, as we're gonna see with our command, we need to kill them within the Twisting Nether. Now we know that it's time to take the battle to them. We clean up whatever forces they've got stationed in Azeroth, possibly together with the Naru, and we blast off into space. We know from Valen's short story that the Exodot has been repaired, so that's part of how we could get there. But alternatively, you could also say that uh, we're gonna get another Tempest Keep. Perhaps the goblins and the gnomes, they've been able to replicate Draenei technology. Either way, we build our spaceships, and these don't come cheap. We need to gather resources, Horde and Alliance needs to work together, similar to how they did it before the opening of Ankirage. We need to create a massive spaceship with the materials collected, and both sides blast off to their own starting planets, and from there they need to find a way to build their own individual spacecrafts. Similar to our own ships at sea, this will allow us to have world PvP outer space while fighting with our ships. I'm talking about small, fast, individual rockets if you want to travel really quick, to massive guild ships that have multiple stations to work together with, you can have people stationed on the guns and on, on, the, on the steering wheel and you can fight with each other. You can steal resources. I think this would be so cool. Besides shooting each other, we'll also use these ships to visit new planets, of course. And this is where they can make the expansion shine with brand new cultures and designs, since there are millions of planets out there. We know of a few of them. We know of Zorov, for example, the homeworld of the Dreadsteeds used by the Warlocks. You have Karesh, original homeworld of the Ethereals, which would be great to dive deeper into the origin story like they did with the Arakoa, and then there's of course Argus, homeworld of the Draenei, and now the stronghold of the Legion. Characters that can accompany us uh, are of course Velen for the Draenei, and it would be great to find out that the Draenei are not as pure and holy as they pretend to be. Remember that they've been running away from Kiel Jaden and the Legion for years upon years, countless times the Legion tried to capture them, and countless times they escaped. What happened to the planets that they visited before? How do they carry the burden of guilt? And what other skeletons are hiding in their closets? We must unite against the Legion. Besides Velen and Draenei, you also have of course Raphion who has a high stake in all of this, so he and Anduin will probably join the journey, while the Naru and the Blood Elves, like Lady Leodrin, they could also be a great addition and the Origin of Light could be further explored. 
Those are the people that come with us, and together we explore the Great Dark, we find out about new cultures, new storylines, new threats, we kick all kinds of butts until we reach Argus. There, a massive army of the Legion is waiting for us, but as we learned during Warlords of Draenor, you need to be in the Twisting Nether to really take care of the Legion. As luck would have it, Argus has a straight gateway into the Twisting Nether, and there, a few characters are waiting for us to join this battle. Illidan Stormrage, for example, many have requested for him to come back, including myself, and Illidan had become so much of a demon that he could never truly be killed on Outland. His spirit returned to the nether, where he, as a demon hunter, he's been fighting against the Legion, but he did not fight alone. Illyria and Torellian are also at his side, and Torellian, he's one of the greatest human paladins in history, and Illyria is the long-lost Windrunner sister, and they finally return to the story. They hold the secrets and the keys to defeating Kill Jaden and the Legion, but the real enemy, the real bad guy behind all of this, he's far too strong. Sargeras, as we take out Kill Jaden, he shows up, he steps up to the plates, but we are nowhere near ready to take him on. With all haste, we evacuate out of the Twisting Nether, maybe Velen or Illidan, or hell, maybe even Fura will stay behind to buy us some time, and we get the hell out of there back to our own planets. Not all is lost though, we've bought ourselves some valuable time, we've conquered areas of the Great Dark, and the Legion has been severely weakened. Refion will resume his duties as the Earth Warden, but for the moment, the planet is safe. This could also be a great gateway into Warcraft 4, into the RTS, the whole battle shown in Valen's vision of the army of light against darkness, but that's maybe getting a bit too far ahead. Now the reason why I think this story is less likely to happen than Eye of Azhara, it's mainly because we just dealt with the Legion on Draenor, and it would be a little bit of a repeat. It's not impossible though, they could definitely go with it, it's just, you know, we've just done a Legion fight. I think it would be a little bit boring, but who knows. At number 3 for this list, the last one I'm gonna talk about today, I've placed a storyline left wide open at the end of the Wrath of the Lich King. So let's go with the name Wrath of the Lich Queen. As we took down Arthas, we got a beautiful cinematic, but one line that didn't make a lot of sense. Without its master's command, the restless scourge will become an even greater threat to this world. Control must be maintained. There must always be... A Lich King. Tyrion nearly placed the helmet on his head, took up the role as Jailer of the Damned, but thankfully for him, Bolvar had nothing left to live for, and he took his place instead. This left Tyrion free to go home to Harfclan, still wielding the Ashbringer, and now they're busy with cleaning up the Plaguelands and keeping it safe. Meanwhile, Sylvanas Windrunner is becoming more and more like the one that she hated. She had entered an allegiance with the Banshees, who will keep her alive and out of hell, while also resurrecting the dead and creating more forces for the Forsaken. They are Sylvanas' her bulwark against the infinite, her way of avoiding that endless torment in hell, but it comes with a price. What you have done here, Sylvanas, it goes against the laws of nature. Disgusting! is the only word I have to describe it. Warchief, without these new Forsaken, my people would die out. Our hold upon Gilneas and Northern Lordaeron would crumble. Have you given any thought to what this means, Sylvanas? What difference is there between you and the Lich King now? Isn't it obvious, Warchief? I serve the Horde. I find it hard to imagine how this storyline would go. On the one hand, we have Sylvanas, who's running around acting like the Lich King, with a lot of people promising to take care of her, but not actually doing anything. On the other hand, Sylvanas is a fan favorite, she's leader of the Forsaken, so how do we deal with her without pissing off a whole bunch of fans and removing another Horde leader out of power? I always had hoped that reuniting with her sisters could possibly bring back Sylvanas from the dark side, but that storyline was used in War Crimes, in which Verissa made plan Sylvanas to murder Garrosh, they grew closer, Sylvanas started to feel again, but in the end, Verissa quickly backed out and betrayed her sister. This devastated Sylvanas, and it makes me believe that not even Illyria can bring her back, but who knows? Maybe the older sister will have a better effect on her, and will be able to push her away from the dark side and become a little bit lighter again. Now that's a way that they could push Sylvanas back to a lighter side, but perhaps her fate is already sealed when she agreed to the Valkyr's proposition. It's uncertain what exactly the Valkyr gets out of helping Sylvanas, besides liberating themselves from Bolvar's control. 
Perhaps all of this was just part of a much greater plan. Now imagine that Ner'zhul, he never left the helm of domination. Arthas, in his mind, he stabbed both Ner'zhul and his good side with Frostmourne, claiming that he wouldn't be controlled anymore. But we already saw his good side still very much present during Wrath of the Lich King. Even the Lich King himself has said things like, I used to be a shaman, so perhaps Ner'zhul was never truly gone. He just moved to the back of Arthas' mind, biding his time until the inevitable would happen. His disobedient puppets would be defeated by the world and Ner'zhul guided us disguised as King Terranus himself. He gave us all the information that we needed, and at the end he proclaimed that there must always be a Lich King, but not for the reasons given. It wasn't to keep the undead under control, we already took care of the undead, there weren't that many forces left. Instead it was to give Ner'zhul a new host. At this very moment he's whispering, corrupting the once noble and righteous bull for four dragon. Kel'Fuzan is still out there as well, we never destroyed his phylactery. And the Valkyr, they were never released from their service to the Lich King. All they did was fill Sylvanas her mind with fake visions of hell, manipulating her back into the service of the one true king. Unknowing, she's creating more and more troops until the day comes that Ner'zhul is ready and the Lich King rises once more. He does not come alone though, he has found a new ally near the capital of the Forsaken. Beneath Tears Fall Glade sleeps the unnamed old god, responsible for driving the High Elves mad, responsible for the corruption and devastation that has befallen that area. Now Ner'zhul has found new allies, allies that are more than willing to set him free in exchange for their own freedom and their own glorious power. Rise of the Lich Queen will set Sylvanas on a path of slavery, the sins of the past will catch up to her, but not to worry fans, you will get the chance to save your beloved queen and the alliance will get their chance to reclaim old territories. Once all is said and done, the Forsaken will have to move since the old gods leaping beneath Tears Fall Glades, that's not an area you want to live in. They have to move to Ice Crown, giving the alliance the opportunity to retake their capital city of Lordran, they can retake Gilneas and even Dan of Trollbane will return to Stromgaard. You could even take this storyline further and remove Sylvanas her control over the Blood Elves, but that might be taking a little bit too far again. This is the basic setup, so Sylvanas, she is is kind of going to be redeemed. It was actually a plan of Ner'zhul and she's going to be turned into a slave. We're going to save her. We're going to take care of Ner'zhul, of Kel'Fuzad and we're going to wrap up that storyline. Like I said everyone, there are countless storylines and expansions that they could build on and I still have a fair few ideas that they could use. So if you like this kind of video, let me know and I might make more. Now these are just a few at the top of my head that I would love to see. I think that there are many more to come. And let me know what you think. What would your perfect storyline, your perfect expansion be for in the future? Leave a comment down below and... Who knows, we might make more videos like this. Anyways, I think I've been rambling and speculating for long enough. So thank you once again for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time guys. See ya.